Welcome back to another Cinema 4D tutorial. Um, I've been working on this animation for a uh, medical device and uh, I'm using it to supplement some, um, some actual footage and then some other graphics about the product. And so I just wanted to kind of break down um, how I approach this. Um, I'm sure that uh, there might have been some more efficient ways to do it, but um, basically, um, and I'll just kind of show you what the final version looks like. Uh, what I was trying to do is accomplish, and, and don't mind the resolution, this was just kind of a quick render for the client, but um, I'm trying to show that the spread of um, a virus can happen um, from uh, these intubation tubes inside of a uh, emergency room or a hospital, and that's what the product aims to uh, reduce, and then it lowers costs, and all that's irrelevant to this tutorial, but um, basically the animation that I have here is as you can see from the tube we have, it was just pulled out of someone's mouth. We have some dripping uh, liquid. We have animated some red particles that kind of uh, signify a virus. And um, as the person walks by, we then switch cameras to a puddle of this kind of infectious liquid on the ground. Uh, the person's gonna pick it up on his feet and transfer it through the emergency room and then we see in the last shot that this person also has it on um, his hand as well and so um, you know it's 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 just kind of a quick animation that plays that just shows how this can be spread quickly in an emergency room um, I got to fix this thumb a little bit in the animation but uh, obviously things are kind of overdone dramatically to show the virus spread but um, anyway, so I just want to kind of break down my scene here. Um, so I haven't really gone through and cleaned up my hierarchy, so it's kind of a mess. But basically, um, the first thing I did was, uh, if I jump out of my stage cameras here, was I created an emergency room, just kind of a hospital feel, uh, where we've got these hospital beds. We have a character over here sitting here. Um, you know, these are some simple models that I created and then you know brought in like a, a heart monitor and some other things that I've seen inside of a uh, emergency room just from doing some Google search some images then I brought in some um, characters from uh, Mixamo and if you're not familiar with Mixamo uh, if you have an Adobe um, account you can use Mixamo for free and so I found this nurse and I just got uh, basically a walk animation um, you know something I mean they have a whole bunch of different walks but let's just try like a you know something like this and I brought the walk animation into uh, my scene and so the character walks and then these little things here are called pivots so obviously um, uh, I had to create a uh, create a couple animations and sort of let this play out over um, over the course of my scene and then the character had to move to new pivot points because the animation would end and then I would need to um, start the next animation so that's another tutorial I'll put a link to that if you want to learn how to put together multiple animations but um, basically that allowed me to have my character walk all the way through the scene um, by pairing up uh, multiple animations. Um, let's see, the other thing that I used, um, I'm using the physical renderer. Um, right now it's just set to 1280 by 720, but um, for my full render I would um, use obviously 1920 by 1080. And I'm using ambient occlusion and global illumination. Um, but um, and then I'm also using depth of field, so on my cameras, um, you'll notice that there's some depth of field. Um, if I go back to the animation here, um, you can see my character right there is, is blurred out. And then the same thing here as the character gets further away, there are depth of field again. And then the same thing here, we have depth of field so that we can't really see the really focused on what the action is in the foreground. Um, so one of the other things I did because this can become pretty taxing um, when you're rendering is uh, 
for certain parts of the um, scene, like right here. Um, while I have ambient occlusion turned on, what you can actually do is come in here and set a compositing tag, and you can tell certain parts of the scene not not be seen by the AO. So you see, I have that checked off for my tube, just because I have basic reflections on there. And then also with my doctor here, um, since he's mostly going to be um, affected by that depth of field, I just have um, seen by AO, AO checked off there as well. And I noticed that that greatly greatly increased my or decreased my render times. Um, the other thing that I did here was um, I used for lighting um, to create these kind of realistic lighting panels. Um, when you have global illumination turned on, you can use a material to light these. So um, in this case, I had just to kind of create a cloner and then um, inside of that, the textures pull these up, have a uh, luminance channel turned on, and then that way, um, you know, if you just, if I do, a, and then having to tinker around with that, so this just gives it a nice, you know, realistic look where it looks like they're illuminating, and, and you can see it's uh, affecting shadows right there and everything like that. Um, and then the final thing I'll show you is just, uh, I created, you know, what I could have done is I could have rendered these out all individually, but what I wanted to do was have it all animate together or have it all rendered together so I just use the stage which um, if I go to one of these transitions you'll see it's as simple as just having camera 5 which is active right now keyframed and then the very next keyframe when I want to make that transition I keyframe to the next camera which is camera 4 and that's how I cut between the two and then that way, um, you know, all I had to do was just kind of line up uh, where I wanted my, my little puddle stain to be as my doctor is on this walking path. So you'll see, you know, he takes a big step right on top of it, right there. Um, and then in order to get this transference of liquid onto his foot, um, if I jump back out of it, you'll notice like, well, anyway, I can go forward and click on this. So I had a little, a little something called Dr. Shoes, and that's this cl these cloner objects, um, which also have a comp compositing tag. So you want to be really careful with liquids, where if, if it was seen by the AO, and you had kind of like a liquid texture with global illumination on, um, what you're going to notice is you're going to get a really dark looking liquid. It's not going to look like it looks, it looks good as it starts to calculate the render. Um, but when it actually, um, sorry, actually that's the wrong one. So this is the one I want to have seen by AO. So as it starts to calculate, it looks decent, but when it actually, um, spits out the render, you're going to notice that it's, it's really dark and it looks just kind of like a, like a, an ocean or like a deep lake and it's it's not doing what you want so what I did was I also unchecked that as seen by AO and that made it look more like a clear liquid you can see down here where my material is it's this color it's kind of silver like just clear obviously depth of field is active right now but you can see how dark that that's coming in and that's not what we want at all so kind of makes it look more like mercury or something like that um, so that's unchecked and then, you know, I just keyframed with the display tag, um, the visibility of this doctor's shoes so that when we're over here, well, what I would have done, I guess I forgot to keyframe that is about right here. We put the visibility to zero keyframe that and then after the step happens right about here we can keyframe it to 100 and use that and then that way um, you know if for some reason
ways and you get a glimpse of the doctor's shoes. Showing, and then we hit that key for him, and it's it all appears. So I bump this forward a little bit further to about right there on the step. Um, so I will be breaking this down individually more. If you have questions about like, you creating a medical animation, um, I have some experience with it, but I'd be happy to kind of help you. You know, break down certain components of the scene, but I just wanted to give you an overview of how it's set up. Um, so we kind of talked about the stage. We talked about some of, of how it was rendered. We talked about how to get some of these animated characters in here. Um, oh yeah, the other big one that I should talk about is the um, the actual liquid drops that are coming out of here. So what I created was an emitter that uh, that sits right on the edge of my intube tube here so if I zoom way in notice if I click on this if I can well it should be underneath here so I have this uh, emitter that is dropping sphere like particles that are that I just kind of um, adjusted to kind of have more of like a I guess like a Hershey kiss look um, and what I noticed at first was when you, when you play around with this, when you if you use like gravity to affect um, to affect it, it doesn't. It's really hard to get it to to work um, the way that you want it to. So I'm not even using gravity, and that way I can just like slow down, um, you know how how fast the uh, how fast the speed is that's coming out. Otherwise, with gravity, it's really hard because it just it just kind of squirt out of here. So it is realistic, but if you want to like you know get like slow drops and really show people, you know what uh, you know where this stuff's coming from. And since I'm only showing this part of the tube, it makes sense to do that. Obviously, if I scroll down here and I watch these particles fall, they're obviously falling you know fairly slow. Um, at kind of a controlled rate of speed. So uh, that's another one, is just using the emitter there to, uh, to create those particles. And obviously, you know, same thing, they have a, uh... yeah, so the, the same thing with these, I would recommend getting rid of the uh, ambient occlusion. So I think that, and even in these as well, I've got the, No, I don't have a tag, but you probably want to put a uh, compositing tag on these and also make them not seen by the AO. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm going to be kind of diving deeper into this, but I just wanted to show you a Cinema 4D animation, practical animation in the uh, medical arena that might... Uh, might be helpful for you to kind of brainstorm how you're going to tackle your animation project. So this has been a fairly quick Cinema 4D tutorial. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more. And also smash that subscribe button.